What is going on guys? Welcome back to this new tutorial series on Neural9 about the R programming language. Now R is a statistical programming language oftentimes used by people in economics, biology, psychology, healthcare, but also of course by statisticians and data scientists. And it's one of the major data science languages. It's the major statistics language, I would say. And if you want to see it as a competition, even though I don't think that's necessarily the best framework to put this in, but it could be seen as an alternative or a competitor to Python in certain areas. And especially if you want to go into statistics and data analysis, not so much into machine learning and deep learning and so on, R can be a better choice oftentimes. And oftentimes you might have to work with people that work with R. As I said, oftentimes people in economics, biology and different sciences use R over Python because it's very simple. It's very uh, intuitive, especially with R Studio. And it's definitely as a data scientist, a good tool to know or to have in your repertoire, a good language to know. And in this video today, in this first episode, we're going to take a look at R, we're going to take a look at R Studio, we're going to see um, how we can interact with the language and with the environment. And then we're going to build on top of that with the next episode. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a look at R and R Studio in this first episode today. The goal is to familiarize ourselves with the development environment, to install everything, to set up everything properly, to change configurations if necessary, and to then build on top of that for the next episodes. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to install R itself, so the programming language itself, the environment, the interpreter, to be able to run R code on our system. And then we're going to install also on top of that R Studio, which is going to be our development environment. So the application that we use to run and write our code um, throughout this tutorial series. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you know what operating system you're working on and you want to go to the respective installation instructions page to follow the instructions in order to install R. This is different from operating system to operating system, which is why I'm not going to show the process on my system here. I already have both R and R Studio installed. And what you want to do is you want to go to this page here. If you have Windows, you want to download the installer, you want to go to this page here, you will find all the links in the description down below. By the way, uh, you want to go to this page here. If you're on Mac, you want to install the respective package for your system. And you want to go to this page here, for example, if you have an Ubuntu based distribution, you just have to add the uh, repository to your sources list, you need to update and install the package, just follow the instructions for your operating system. And then on top of that, this is now uh, more unified, you go to this website here, which is our studio, you will find a link to it as well in the description down below. And you scroll down to your operating system, again, Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and so on, install the respective package here. And uh, once the installation is done, you should have our studio installed on your system. Now, for those of you who prefer to use the command line, you can open up a terminal, this is now optional, and you can type the capital R command to run uh, R, the interpreter as a calculator, so to say, as a as an interpreter as an interactive shell, so to say, in the command line. And here you can type now 10 plus 20, for example, or SQRT, so square root 16, this is four. Um, and you can quit by typing Q in parentheses, if you want to use this in the command line. But we're going to work with R Studio. So open up the R Studio application that you just installed. And this will show you a development environment that looks somewhat like this. Now, in your case, it's going to look slightly differently because it has a different theme by default. If you want to change that, we can talk about this right away. You can go to tools, you can go to global options, to appearance, and then you can go down here to editor theme to change the way it looks. I think. I'm not sure what the default is, but probably something like Eclipse, probably it looks something like this on your side. Um, I'm using Twilight as a theme here, if you want to have the exact same layout. Um, and yeah, you can play around with the different settings here, you can go to the, um, you can you can set up the different um, styling options here and the different configurations that you like. But what we're going to talk about in this video today is the structure of this application. Now we don't know yet how to write any R code. So I'm not going to expect you to understand all the stuff that I show you here. I'm going to do stuff that we learn later on in the series that we'll learn about later on in the series, but I want to show you where certain components are going to be present. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up a file in the upper left corner here, we're going to click on this plus button, we're going to go to our script. And we're going to save this file to the desktop. Now you can call this whatever you want, I'm going to call it main dot R capital R, this is the extension for R scripts. And now what we can do is we can still run the code down here in the terminal 20 plus 20 is 40. 
but we can also write code in our file now. So I can say, for example, 10 plus 20, or I can say square root of 16. And now what I can do is I can mark a certain line and I can press on or I can click on run here. So if I click run, it runs the selected code. If I select this and click run, it runs this code down below here in the command line. I can also select both and I can click run and then it runs both of them uh, one after the other. So this is uh, how we can run code here. Now, usually you don't want to do this with the mouse. What you want to do is you want to do control enter. It's just easier. You go to a line, control enter, executes it in the command line, as you can see. You can also select multiple lines and do control enter, then both statements are being or all the statements uh, are being executed here. Um, so that's the basic interaction here, you write code, and then you run it with control enter, or if you prefer it, for some reason, you can run it here with this button, just select the code you want to run because in R, you don't run the full file, you run the selected code. Um, now, again, I'm going to do stuff here that we learn about later on in the series. But for example, if you define variables, which are going to be the topic of the next video, uh, they're going to appear at the right side in this environment section here. So if I have, for example, a variable a that I assigned a value 10 to, and I run this code, you can see I have the variable a here on the right side. And I can do the same thing for b. I can say b is 20. And now I have these two variables on the right side. The same goes for data sets. If I run, uh, if I load full data sets into my script, I will also see them in the right side. So if I say data is equal to iris, for example, this will load a full data set here into the right side, I can explore it with a table view here, you don't need to understand any of that. I'm just showing you different components here. So since R is all about statistics and data analytics, it's about data. So every data, every piece of data, be it a variable or a full data set will be seen here on the right side in the environment. Everything you see here is loaded into the environment and you can use it. So I can refer to it. I can say a plus 10 to get 20 because a is 10. I store a here as a value so I can refer to it. Uh, but we're not going to talk about this yet. Um, also, if I have a visualization, if I want to visualize some some data, I can see the result here in the plot section. This is a topic that we're going to talk about later on. But for example, if I have some values, one, two, three, four, five, I can run this and the resulting plot will be displayed down here. Now you don't need to understand plotting, you don't need to understand data or the C or anything. Just understand that when there is some visualization, it will appear here in the bottom right corner. Um, and yeah, that's basically the structure, we can also clear the plot by pressing this button. Uh, we can also clear the environment here. So I can say, uh, delete everything. And now I can no longer access a it says a is not found. And this is the basic way we're going to interact with our studio, we're going to write our files, we're going to write our scripts, uh, with code in them. And then we're going to execute parts of them or all of it. Uh, and we're going to see the results here in the form of data in the form of environments and values and here in the form of visualizations. And by the way, one more thing for those of you who can't live without Vim bindings like me, you can go to tools, global options, code editing, and then down here, you can enable Vim bindings. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, don't do this, it won't benefit you, you don't know what you're doing. But if you need Vim bindings, here's where you can activate them. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.